Yo guys, before the video starts, I just want to let you know, I have a Twitter, I have an Instagram, please go follow them, it would mean a lot to me, they're linked in the description, and they'll also be on screen, right about now. Alright, thank you. Yo, what's up guys, it's Luna here, and today I'm going to show you my three favorite Premiere Pro plugins and how to use them. Coming in at number three, we have BCC by Boris Effects, which has lots of great transitions and effects. For transitions, we have BCC Damage TV Dissolve, which when paired with Low Pass, can create a very interesting transition. Here's how to set it up. So first you want to go over to the, you want to grab it from your effects tab, drag it between two clips, and search up low pass. So for this, this purpose is this, you're going to need a song, so I'm just going to drag one in quickly from my desktop. And you're going to want to, you want to place a marker where the transition starts on the song and where the transition ends. This is just for uh, to make it easier. So then I want to grab low pass. I want to drag it onto the song. Not really on the clip because it doesn't really matter. The clips aren't really generally that loud. So what I want to do is I want to go right here using my arrow keys. I want to find the keyframe before the marker. And I want to keyframe it up here and drag it to the max amount. So that's to whatever that number is. And I want to go one frame over to where the effect, the transition starts, maybe like over here when you can start seeing it happen on the screen okay here it starts getting more intense so maybe I'll, I'll keyframe it there and then I, I like to go around 1375 and then I want to go to the very end of the transition find where it starts becoming less visible right around here keyframe it to 1375 and then at the very end I want to drop another keyframe for the max once again so when it render when you render it out uh it looks like this it, here we go just play it over you guys okay moving on to our next effect that's not this i ha we have bcc temporal blur so uh this this is one of my favorite effects just because it can be used as like if you want to speed up something and you need some motion blur to make it look smoother or just in general as an effect that you can put on basically anything. Okay, to set up BCC Temporal Blur, what you want to do is you want to find... I have a preset, so I'm just going to show you my settings for my preset. So, effects, I have BCC Temporal Blur. It's so basically, I've, my amount is set to 5, and all these other settings, you can, you can copy them if you wish. So then I'll render it out, I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, it's all done rendering, and let me show you what it looks like. So... When you play this effect, you get this really nice blurriness Family that friendly. also, like, yeah, I don't know, it's hard to see in this clip because the motion isn't that great, but you get this really nice blurriness that, like, creates, like, frame tearing, but it's it's smooth at the same time. It looks really nice. Anyways, moving on. Our next, the next plugin I want to take a look at is Sapphire. So, Sapphire is, a, Sapphire has so much in it. Like, everyone uses Sapphire to edit montages. It has so many different effects. Like, look, look, look at all these effects, guys. Like, there's so many. Sapphire, really, you can do anything you want in Sapphire. So, generally, uh, I use Sapphire on kills. So here, I'll show you what it looks like without velocity. Just cut the clip right here. And I'll put one of my favorite effects, as I showed in my previous video, uh, was S underscore time warp. So I go here. S underscore time warp. You can see my settings here. Basically, at the very beginning, I keyframe it to 2 and negative 2. And then uh, at the very end of the clip, I keyframe it to 0. There you can see. At the very end of the clip, my keyframes are both set to, to 0. And it creates this really nice RGB effect. Here, I'll show you what it looks like fully rendered out. Alright, fully rendered. Here's what the kill effect looks like. You got this. Anyways, this is, this is one of my personal favorite effects with this. Alright, now moving on to my personal favorite plugin, Twixter. The reason I love this plugin so much is because it makes timer mapping extremely easy. Okay, here's how to use it. So basically, what I want to do is I want to drag Twixter onto the clip, I want to put it on. I want to find the keyframe right before where the gun shoots. So look at, make sure to look at the bullet count. See, it goes from 30 right over here. I want to see the point where it goes to 29. The keyframe right before it goes to 29 and right before the bullet shoots. Right about here is good. Okay, then I want to I go down to Twixter, and 
I want to drop a keyframe for 100. Then, I want to go over until I see the player take the shot to the head. So, right about here is pretty good because you can see them die. And then I want to drop another keyframe. I'm going to set that one to 300. Then I want to go six frames over using my arrow keys. One, two, three, four, five, six. Drop another keyframe and set that to 50. And then I'll render that out and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Alright, fully rendered out. Let's see what it looks like. Alright, anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Uh, my top three favorite plugins for Premiere Pro. Uh, I'll try to leave links for the plugins listed uh, in the description down below. Make sure to follow my socials uh, Twitter, Looney1x, Instagram, Looney1x, of course, subscribe. You know, drop a like if this helps you at all, or uh, if you're going to use any of these plugins. Anyways, have a great day.